Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I want to do a quick review of the B-Link BT3 Pro. I actually picked this up for a friend of mine, an older lady who doesn't have a computer right now. I tried to fix her old single core AMD and it's just, it's toasted. She only had 512 megs of RAM. So she wanted something she could watch the news on, watch her Ellen shows on YouTube, Dr. Phil, stuff like that. So I went ahead and picked this up. They run anywhere from 130 to 180, depending on the configuration. It has the same little Atom processor that comes in the Latte Panda or the Upboard. This unit has an Intel Cherry Trail X5Z8350, Intel HD 400 graphics. This one has four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage, but they offer a less expensive version with only two gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage. Supposedly this thing will do 4K, but this will never see a 4K display. I'm gonna set her up with a little Dell 1080p monitor, mount this to the back of it. Very low power solution for her. On one side of the unit, we have two USB 2.0 ports and a full-size SD card slot. I believe it's good up to 128 gigabyte SD card. One of the cool things I like about this, it does have a VGA port. Now I know a lot of people don't use VGA, but you can get the older monitors really cheap. So VGA, in my opinion, is a must have on most of my PCs. Moving around back, we have the power button, our power in, which is 12 volt, two amp one USB 3.0 port, HDMI, a gigabit ethernet port, and audio out. This unit did come with a one foot HDMI cable, a six foot HDMI cable, a 12 volt, two amp power supply, and a Versa mount with screws. So the Versa mount will allow you to mount it to the back of the monitor, and that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing. On the front of the box, as you can see, we have 4K Ultra HD, extended display, M.2 SSD Extend, and Intel inside. So these are supposed to have an M.2 SATA slot inside. That's one of the reasons I got this, to expand it to 128 gigabytes. But when I took the unit apart, there was no M.2 slot on the board itself. Really disappointed I was gonna upgrade it to 128 gigabytes. 64 is gonna be fine and she could use an external hard drive but that's very disappointing because it is advertised with an M.2 slot. This is a fanless, passively cooled system. It doesn't have a copper heat sink, but the aluminum heat sink is pretty beefy and I think it's gonna keep it cool enough. Not much going on on the back side. I wasn't expecting much there. I mean, we do have the real-time clock battery, but that's about it. So I could have just went with a cheap Android box for her video playback, but she loves to use Quicken and she wants to do her taxes at the end of the year. So I figured she needed a Windows PC to do this. She was running XP. I'm sure she can get used to Windows 10. I'm gonna explain it to her a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and boot this up and see how it performs. All right, so I got it booted up, everything updated. It's ready to go. I'm gonna open up the task manager and we'll go to performance up here at the top. For the CPU, we have the Atom Z8350 at 1.4 gigahertz. This does turbo up to 1.9 when it's needed. Four gigabytes of DDR3 1600 RAM. Now this is soldered to the board, so you cannot upgrade this. It would have been nice to have just one single DIMM inside of here. 64 gigabytes of onboard storage. This also cannot be upgraded. This is an eMMC module. And it does do 5G network. Now my 5G is way in the back, so I'm just on 2.4. Does decent though. So in this video, I'm not gonna be testing any games. I'm just gonna be doing everyday tasks, like surfing the web, checking the news, watching YouTube, going to Netflix, stuff like that. If you wanna see this CPU and GPU playing games, I have several videos. I'll leave links in the description. First up, we need to hit Yahoo News. Loads up pretty fast. It'll definitely work for something like this. Just browsing the web, checking Facebook, email, basic stuff that an everyday user does. Not a super user, but an everyday user. Let's check YouTube playback. I'm gonna go to one of my old videos. It's 1080p 60 FPS. I need to skip the ad, so I'm just gonna fast forward this right here. We'll see how this handles 1080p 60 FPS playback. Make sure I'm set to 1080p. 
and we'll go to full screen. I'll let it buffer a bit. So even though this isn't fully buffered out, we should have smooth playback and I can already tell that it's not smooth at 1080p 60 FPS. Could be my connection, but I'm more than halfway buffered with it. It shouldn't do this. Got a lot of drop frames going on. I've tested this CPU GPU combo in a lot of other little devices, single board computers and stuff like that. I have had trouble with YouTube playback at 1080p 60 FPS. So it's not just this unit, it is the CPU. Let's go through half of it. And now it's fully buffered, so it shouldn't lag at all. And we're still getting drop frames. Let's go to 720p and see how that works. Seven twenty P and I can still look at the picture and tell it's still a little bit laggy. Good thing the lady I'm giving this to only watches like DVR'd Ellen that people post up on YouTube and Dr. Phil. So I'm sure 360 P is going to play perfectly fine on this. 720 is really not that bad. A lot less drop frames, but 1080p 60 FPS is pretty bad on here. Next up, Netflix playback. Now, Netflix is optimized very well for a lot of devices, so I don't think we're going to have any trouble playing Netflix with this. I have to turn the sound off for this video, just in case there's any copywritten music. If the sound is horrible, I will definitely let you know, and I'll give you a little bit of a sound clip. I just don't want any copywritten music in this video. student studying to be a dental technician. Throop is a beauty spot just to the northeast of Bournemouth. So I full screened it. Now one of the big things is Netflix is a paid service so they make sure their stuff works on lower end devices because you're paying the money for it. It's very optimized for tons of devices, so I was pretty sure we'd get good playback with this. So my thoughts on this unit, it's actually pretty decent for somebody who just needs a computer, a basic computer to surf the web, watch YouTube, play Netflix, maybe play a few online games. I'm sure Minecraft, the Windows Store edition, is going to run great in here. If you're a super user, you're going to need something more powerful, but for the everyday internet user who just goes to Facebook, Twitter, Netflix, YouTube, Yahoo News, this is good to go. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you could hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel because I got a lot more coming. If you're interested in picking something like this up, I'm going to leave Amazon links and Gearbest links. I got mine on Amazon, but I did see that they sell them on Gearbest. Shipping might take a little longer, but it might be cheaper also. If you guys have any requests to see something running on this unit besides video games, let me know in the comments below. I've done several videos on the X5 8350, and I'll leave links down there. I've tested tons of games, tons of emulators. Like always, thanks for watching.